Thank you, Ryan. Welcome everybody to the IRS uh, Form 8610 session today. Um, it's hard to believe that 2021 has gone by so fast, but January is right around the corner. So it's time to start thinking about our 8610s. Um, and with that, we decided to include this session as it feels timely um, to give everybody a refresher and a review on the 8610 uh, functionality available in ProLink HFA. So, <clears throat> excuse me, our learning objectives today, um, we're gonna uh, review and, and remind how to confirm um, our tax form configuration settings. Um, we're gonna learn how to create the 8610 record for the reporting year. We'll then follow with how to associate the 8609s that support the 8610 for that reporting year. Next up will be associating any Schedule A's, right, for our carryovers to the 8610. And then we'll come back again to our 8610 record for the reporting year um, and complete that and finish it up once we have everything associated that we need. So let's go ahead and dive right in with confirming our configuration settings. So um, I do have all of this detail available for you within um, this PowerPoint and we will be offering this out to everybody, but I'm gonna go ahead now and break out of um, this PowerPoint and let's go live in the system um, to look at these items together. So you can see that I am logged into um, my version of ProLink HFA, I have opened the admin panel so that we can access our config settings, which is where we find these configuration settings that we need to check on um, for our 8610. <clears throat> so as you can see, when I arrive at this screen, I have the full listing of the configuration settings, and I'm going to do a filter here, because remember this list screen is a data view type screen. So I'm going to filter down to these items that um, have tax form um, within the setting name. And this helps me dial into the particular items that I need, which are uh, my tax form name of housing credit agency. So that's your agency name, right, that you're going to include on the 8610. The next item that we need to check on is our address of our housing agency. So that's, again, the address of our agency that we want to appear um, on the 8610. Um, we have our tax form agency official name. That's the name and title um, of your authorizing member who will sign your 8610. And then finally, we have one more, <clears throat> excuse me, setting um, that, oh goodness, I can't type at all. That is your um, employer ID. So let's do a little search for that one. <clears throat> so here we have our employer identification number of agency. So, you know, again, that employer ID that you want to appear um, on that tax form 8610. So let's just take a quick look back um, to this, um, you know, screen for our 8610, which looks just like our form. So we see, again, we've got that name of housing credit agency. So that's what will populate for us automatically when we create the record. We've got the address of our agency, that employer ID number, and then at the lower portion of the screen and form is then the name and title, right, of that authorizing official, okay? So again, check in, do a quick check in for these configuration settings in your system, make sure that you're all set to go. Um, and then you're ready to really dive in and really begin creating your 8610. Um, so a quick review for folks. What is an 8610? Why do we care about it? Why do we need to do this? This is the form <clears throat> that annually 
as an, a tax credit allocating agency, we have to complete this and submit it to IRS where we are reporting the dollar amount of tax credits allocated during the calendar year. Um, and then to support those numbers that we're reporting, we include the 8609s and or Schedule A's that support that detail, okay? And again, we do this every year annually. Um, this form is due the last day of February every year, right? So once we kind of turn the corner here and hit January, remember that we're then thinking about and working on reporting for our 2021 um, allocation year, okay? So let's go ahead and break out of this slide deck again and go back live into the system. And let's take a look at um, how do we create the 8610, okay? So I will break out of that slide deck. Here we're back live in the system. Um, and here I'm gonna access the utilities panel. From this point, I'm going to access um, our TCA group um, in this utilities menu. And I'm gonna select that tax form 8610 option, okay? Then I received now the listing, as we can see, of all the previous 8610s that I've worked on. Um, and in order to create the new 8610, I'm going to hit new in my top toolbar. Now, I want to note for everybody that in our example today, we are working on our tax form year of 2020 um, because the IRS has not yet released our 2021 form yet. Um, so just, you know, a note for everybody, when we get to January, you're going to be using the 2021 tax form year and it will auto populate for you. Um, when you click that new button from the list screen, that latest tax form year will auto populate here for you. Okay. So we want to go ahead and um, update our tax form status. We're in process. We're working um, here. And then we wanna go ahead and do um, a save um, on this screen so that we then um, receive the additional uh, tabs that we need to work on for our 8609s and our Schedule A's, okay? So I will go ahead and do that save action. And then you'll notice I get my save successful message. Then I have access to my uh, 8609s tab um, and my Schedule A's tab, okay? So, and then of course you see as you kind of review um, through this main tab, this screen looks just like our 8610 form. And we did that intentionally, right? Why make it look different than what you're actually doing? Um, and you'll note that at this point, there are a few items that are filled in for us. Um, but there are, you know, a handful, particularly part one here, of items that are not yet populated for us. And that's because we've got to connect or associate our 8609s and or our Schedule A's. So let's go ahead um, and take a look first at associating our 8609s. So when I click onto this tab, of course, because this is a new excuse me, reporting year that I'm creating. I've got nothing listed here yet because I haven't associated any. So in order to associate the 8609s, I'm gonna click on this add 8609 button here at the upper right, if you saw there, of this grid, okay? And this opens a modal for me. Um, this modal you can see is titled find 8609s, but you can see that the system is automatically populating 8609s for me um, that meet some criteria um, between date issued and date of allocation um, in order for me to select these items to attach um, to my 8610 form, okay? Um, so, and so let's talk about, you know, which of these things are or why these 
deals, why these 8609s are showing up for me. Okay. Um, for um, 9% tax credit deals, we're seeing 8609s where our date issued is in our tax year. And our date of allocation is either is in our tax year for 9%. Okay. Now these two top rows that we see where our date of allocation is blank, these are for our 4% deals. Okay. Um, and we'll go into a little bit more detail around these exact um, requirements of, of 8609s that are populated here. Once we circle back to our main tab and look at those numbers that are populated. Um, so we'll dig in a little bit more. But so I'm going to go ahead um, and select. Um, I'll select all four of these deals. I, I trust the system. I feel like the system is telling me it is. It's telling me what I should be associating to my 8610 for this year. So you'll notice that I kind of clicked individually each of these items, which is fine. You can do that. Um, if you need to exclude an item for some reason, if you need to choose everything that's listed here in the modal, you can just go ahead and click on that checkbox in that header row, and that'll select all of those items for you with just a single click. Okay. Once I've got the items selected here, I'm then going to click on my add selected and close button in the toolbar here. And so what'll happen as you'll see these 8609s that I've selected will now be listed here, as you see, on my 8610, okay? So, so what I've done is I've associated, connected these 8609s to my 2020 8610, right? So a couple things happened because I did this. Number one, we'll be able to get some of those part one items populated for us on our main tab. And then number two, when ultimately when we're ready to go, right, when we're ready to print everything um, and mail it out to IRS, um, we'll be able to use our create 8609 button here that we see at the upper right of this grid. And that's going to generate all of the 8609s listed um, and selected into a single PDF for us, okay? So ultimately what we'll end up with is we'll have one PDF that is the actual 8610 form when this is all said and done. That'll be one PDF. We'll have a PDF that includes our 8609s. And then if we have Schedule A's, we'll have a PDF that includes those Schedule A's. So, you know, as much as three total PDFs that we would print have them assigned, send them off to the IRS, okay? So now that we have associated um, these 8609s, we're ready to go. Um, we can do the create 8609 button. I clicked that. You can see that then the PDF is offered to me in my browser download bar. And I can open this PDF and take a look at it and just see, right, that, all the populated 8609s are included there, okay? So that would be, we're ready to go with our 8609s, okay? Now, realize as well that, you know, as you're working on this um, form and, and, you know, getting these details ready, if, you, um, if you're called away from this task for whatever reason, you can click save in your top toolbar the system is going to save this 8610 in the state that you're at. You can come back later um, and complete your work here, whether you want to review any of the 8609s or you need to add more um, or you're ready to do your Schedule A's. But know that, you know, you can save this as is. You can make changes. Um, you can come back later. OK, doesn't have to be all said and done in one single setting. OK. Okay, so let's go ahead now and take a look at our Schedule A's, okay? And so remember, we use our Schedule A like, you know, similar to the 8609 in that, you know, that's our backup documentation, right? That's our supporting documentation 
um, to, to detail these numbers, right, that we're submitting on the 8610. But the Schedule A is specifically to report carryover allocations, okay? So, you know, if for your agency, if your allocations are carryover, you're going to have the Schedule A's to come right along with the 8609s and just provide that detail, okay? And so similar um, to what we saw with the 8609s, um, for the Schedule A, we're going to do this action of clicking our Add Schedule A button, okay? So when I click that button, right, we see a modal that's titled Find Schedule A, similar, right, to what we saw with our 8609s. And again, the system will pre-populate this modal for me um, based on criteria that we should include um, from our tax credit deals that have Schedule A's, okay? And so same idea as what we saw with our 8609s. We can go ahead and select that Schedule A and add that. Now, recognize as well, both with this um, finding associating Schedule A and with the 8609s, you know, the system does give us this pre-population um, of, you know, what is, is um, as close as we can assume should be submitted with the 8610. You can modify this search criteria um, and, you know, search for other 8609s or other Schedule A's um, that you need to include with this particular 8610, okay? you've got a little bit special case scenario, um, you'll be fine. You'll be able to, um, you know, search through the system, find whichever item it is, um, and then go ahead and attach it to this 8610. Okay. And so same idea um, as what we saw with our 8609s, we can, you know, select a single row um, here from the results, um, or we can choose that checkbox in that header row that will select everything that's available there in the results. And likewise, we click our add selected and close button. We receive that save successful message. And then we're returned here to our schedule A tab and we can see that item that we selected is now added as our detail for our 2020 8610. Okay, now it's so really same scenario as what we see um, with the 8609. We're also going to go ahead then and use that create button um, to actually generate the PDF, right? And of the Schedule A's. And you'll notice that the system will tell you if you don't select the items that you want to be included in the PDF, the system will say, hey, Kelly, you forgot to tell me which one. So I need to go ahead and select the one or many that I want. Same idea, I can use that checkbox selection in that header row to help me out with selecting everything that I have on my tab. Then I do my create schedule A. And just like we saw with the 8609, I receive my PDF in my browser download bar, and then I can open it and review it and just take a look at the Schedule A as I need to. There it is. And just like we saw uh, with our 8609, you know, each Schedule A that we associate here to the 8610 will be included in this single P PDF, one after the other, okay? Okay. Um, so again, makes it easy for us, right? Like, remember, we have, you know, a maximum of three PDFs that we'll print um, and submit um, for this 8610 process, okay? Rather than having every 8609 separate, every Schedule A separate, okay? Little bit of um, helper functionality there. One more item that I want to highlight, I'm going to go ahead and click that create schedule A again and just open that up. I just want to note and, and take a little deeper look here into our schedule A form. 
um, and remind ourselves that, you know, the data is pre-populated for us, right? Um, so we've got our agency name, right? That came from our configuration setting. We've got our, our agency address came from our configuration setting. We've got our employer ID there that came from our configuration setting, okay? Um, we also have building owner name and address um, that will populate for us if we do the work of populating that information on our tax credit deal, okay? Um, so let's take a look for just a minute um, at where these items are populated um, here for the Schedule A. So I'm gonna click back over to my other browser tab to come back to ProLink HFA. And I can go ahead and click right on <clears throat> that Schedule A row that I have listed there that I want to dive into the detail of the tax credit deal. And you'll, you see, it takes me right to the Schedule A screen on my tax credit deal. So I can see, right, my left navigation menu has updated for me to offer me the details of this particular tax credit deal, okay? And so remember, we find that this building owner information um, comes from our edit deal screen. So I'm clicking on my edit deal menu option there in the left panel. And then I'm clicking into my owner info tab, <clears throat> excuse me, on my edit deal screen. This is the area where um, 1A, 1B, and 2 are populated in that Schedule A, okay? Now, I didn't have mine um, filled in ahead of time, um, but I can go ahead and fill it in here very quickly for us. Um, it's our owner name. I know it's our tax ID. And then what's the other one, the address? Um, now, this information, you know, in your regular kind of everyday um, business is going to be populated for you um, through your TCA application process. Um, so, you know, it's not likely that you would be doing this at this late time. But I did want to just remind everybody, this is in fact where that information is populated from. So I'll do a save here on my edit deal screen. And then I'll just click right in here to my Schedule A tab that's right here on my deal. I can go and ahead and click into the Schedule A um, for this deal. Um, and what I have to do to get this detail to populate is I actually have to delete the Schedule A itself and then recreate it, okay? So you saw me delete that existing Schedule A and then I can click that Add button again there. And now I can see that my owner information is populated, okay? So again, going through this action is not gonna be your everyday business, but you may have special case scenarios along the way where you may need to be editing this owner information to appear in um, that tax form. And so I wanted to walk us through and refresh us. Where do we find that information? How do we update that information, okay? So let's return now to our utilities menu panel and let's go back in and access our 8610 that we created for 2020, right? And so I clicked in here, I see my main tab, I've got my 8609 tab, I've got my Schedule A tab. Now, because I deleted that Schedule A, record that was existing on my tax credit deal, it was automatically removed here from my Schedule A tab, okay? So that reminds me to come back and re-add that updated Schedule A to the tab for my um, um, 8610 for this year, okay? So here we can see our 8610 now, our Schedule A now, I apologize, that we can associate um, to <clears throat> now our 
form 8610. Okay, so we've updated that Schedule A and we've now re added it to our 8610. Okay, so um, at this point, um, you know, we could then do our create schedule A to generate again that PDF with that updated schedule A. Okay. So we're at the point now in our process where, okay, we've added all the schedule A's, we've added all our 8609s. So we're kind of getting into the home stretch here, right? We, we now want to return to our main tab. Um, and address these other fields. Remember, we said with part one, that wasn't updated for us yet. Some items in part two are updated, um, not everything, um, but because we have added that supporting documentation, we need our 8610 to reflect those changes now. So our next step in the process is to use our calculate button that we find here in the top toolbar, kind of at the right of the toolbar there. So when we click this calculate button, I'll go ahead and click it now, what's going to happen, and you can see these fields are updated, right? So the system <clears throat> takes a look at the 8609s, the Schedule A's that we've associated, and populates these fields here um, in part one for us based on those forms that we've attached. And it also updates the remaining fields here in part two, okay? So at this point, um, with our review of these numbers, um, we can feel confident that our part two um, is ready to go. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, at this stage, we do want to click our save button in our top toolbar because clicking that calculate button, right? It updated some of the fields here, okay? So we need to save those, okay? So let's take a minute um, and like I said, we would review a little more of the detail around why is the system offering us the particular 8609s when we search for them? Why is the system offering us the particular Schedule A's um, when we do that search for them? So let's take a moment, let's hop back into um, our PowerPoint here and let's just take a look at some of these details. So on that main tab, line one, which is the count of all the 8609s that we're gonna include. When that modal searches for those and when we're selecting those, um, what, the system is finding for us in that search is that, remember the date issued, the year in the date issued field on the 8609 matches or is equal to our tax form year, okay? So when we, when we search for those 8609s, we get a listing of the 8609s where the date issued field is equal to 2020 because that's the year that we're working on, okay? Now remember, that's for 9% or 9% non-competitive if you participate um, deals within the system where date issued year is matching our tax year, okay? Our form year. Um, and then number two, we also are seeing or what's included in retrieving those 8609s for us is that also the date of allocation field on the 8609, um, the year there matches our tax form year, okay? And again, for 9% type of deals, okay? So date issued and date of allocation in 9% deals are matching our form year, which in our example is 2020, okay? So let's take a look now. Um, how is line two populated for us on that main tab? Um, and again, you know, not only is this how is line two populated right on our main tab, but when we do our search when to add our 8609s, how does the system know what to offer us, right? 
in those automatic results. So additionally, what we're seeing for line two is allocations prior to our selected tax year, right? So, you know, how many 8609s are we including where the allocation is before 2020 for our example, right? So how are we, how is the system figuring out which 8609s qualify, right? We are looking at the date issued field, right? So date issued is in our example, 2019, right? Because we're working on our 2020 year. The date of the allocation um, is a year previous to our current year, right? So not 2020. Um, and then again, 9% um, deals are the type of deals that we're talking about here, okay? So remember with our previous slide for line one, how that was populated and the criteria for the 8609s was 9% that are where the date issued and date of allocation equal this year. So now line two and other items, other 8609s that will be included um, in that fine modal for us are date issued is equal to the tax form year and date of allocation is prior to the tax form year, okay? Still talking 9% here. So that's line one and line two and a couple, right, of the criteria that are powering that find modal for the 8609s for us. So next we take a look at line three. Here, um, we're doing a sum of the following values. So we're looking at um, allocations um, to tax exempt products, projects, excuse me. Um, so that means now we're considering our 4% tax credit deals, okay? So again, this is how we're populating line three, but this is also another criteria that the system's using to help populate the results in that fine modal when we're associating the 8609s, okay? So playing a little double duty here. Um, so we're looking for 4% deals where the date issued is equal to our tax form year. So we're looking for 4% deals where date issued is 2020 for our example. Date of allocation can be any date or it can be blank, okay? Um, and again, 4% deals, okay? So the, the count of 8609s that meet this criteria is what is populated into line three for us. And then also, this is another criteria to help us associate the 8609s in that fine model, okay? So let's head on in next to line four, okay? Some of maximum housing credit dollar amount allowable, okay? So again, how are we figuring out what number to put in this item on the 8610? And then um, this one's actually not more criteria for that fine 8609. So how are we capturing this dollar amount for line four? We're using the 4% tax credit deals where the date issued year is equal to 2020, right? That's the year of our example. And then the allocation, date of allocation, again, is anything or it's blank, right? So this is really the sum of that dollar amount field for our 4% tax credit deals, okay? So that is the number, the dollar figure that we're populating into line four um, on that 8610, okay? So then um, we move into line five. That's a simple count of all of the schedule A's that we've associated um, to this 8610. And then finally, line six, we're adding lines one, two, three, and five. So let's just take a moment here 
um, and break out of this slide deck and just take a quick look back into that main tab of um, our 8610. Okay, so all of those items that we just reviewed, that's how these items one through six are being populated in part one of this form. Okay. And then remember the items one through three that we saw in our slide deck, that's also the criteria that's used when I'm associating my 8609. So if we come back to our 8609 tab and I do the add button, um, numbers one through three, right, are how this results modal is populated automatically for us, okay? And again, remember, you know, you can change the search criteria. Again, when you're um, associating your 8609s or your Schedule A's, you can modify um, the year that you're looking for. Um, I, I don't have any 2019s that are available. Um, you know, you can search for a specific deal name if you need to, um, to include um, the 8609 for, okay? My, my landing deal doesn't have any 8609s right now, so I am getting no search results there, okay? But remember, you know, when you start working on this in January for 2021, pick up this slide deck to help um, remind yourself, you know, how are these modals being populated for me? Why are they offering me um, the 8609s and the Schedule A's that they are? Let me refresh myself. Let me feel confident about what I'm including. And then also let me refresh myself and be confident about how these items in part one are populated. Okay. And remember too that you know, one through three, five and six are counts, um, but then you've also got item four here. That's that actual dollar figure um, that is populated there for you, okay? And so as we look into, um, back into the slide deck, I have included for you um, the details about how the remaining um, fields in both parts two and part three are populated. Um, I won't take us through um, all of this detail, um, but know again that the detail is here um, to let you understand how each of those items are populated. Um, and so again, when you're you know, going through the task of creating your 8610, grab this Grab the slide deck to refresh yourself. Um, this is quite a bit of detailed information that none of us are going to memorize. Um, so, you know, use this as a cheat sheet, okay? Um, you know, when you're going through and filling in these items. Um, now, let me, let me return back um, to the system for just a moment because I want to I wanna talk about part three um, here on the form. So part three here are really, you know, yes, no questions, right? These questions you do need to complete yourself. Um, the, you know, there's not a way for the system to, you know, kind of logically determine what your answers are here. This is more like, did you do what you said you were going to do? And you say, yes, I did. Right. So you do need to complete um, those three questions. Um, in part three there for you, but um, everything in part two um, and part one, and then in that upper section, um, in terms of your agency information will be populated for you by the system. Of course, if this is an amended report, that'll be something that you'll need to select when you're, excuse me, in the scenario of doing an amended report. Um, but otherwise, um, all of the detail is then populated um, on that main tab for that 8610. So next, um, we are going to proceed 
um, to generate the PDF um, for this particular 8610. And very similar to what we saw um, in our 8609s that are associated in our Schedule A's, we have a Create IRS Form 8610 button available here in our top toolbar. We click that button. Our PDF is offered in our browser download and there we can open it and do a quick review. We see that is our actual 8610 form, okay? And just like we saw in our 8609s, our Schedule A's, we're using, remember, the name of our agency and the address of our agency and the uh, employer ID, right? Those, remember, those come from our config settings, okay? Those are populated. And then, of course, the part one and the part two details, right, that we saw on our main screen are populated here for us. Now, of course, as well, whatever you have responded um, as your answers to those items in part three will also be populated there for you. Um, the name and title of your signing authorizing official um, is populated there for you. So at this point, you're really ready um, to um, print out, right? Um, this PDF and your supporting PDFs take this 8610 for signature um, to that person in your organization who's authorized to sign. Um, and your package is then ready um, to mail out to the IRS. Okay. So a couple more items that I want to talk about and kind of refresh us about. Now that I've got my two and possibly three PDFs, right, that I'm ready to send out, um, what I want to do is, is return to Prolink HFA, and I want to go ahead and scan and upload those PDFs and attach those to my allocation cycle. Now, those PDFs will remain forever for you in that tax form 8610 area. They're, they will not go away. Somebody would have to go through the actual motion of deleting that record um, for that information to go away. But for ease of use and for organiza organizational purposes, I like for us to come into the allocation cycle itself that we just have created the 8610 for and go ahead and upload those scanned PDFs um, to your allocation cycle records, okay? Um, it just, give, again, it gives you um, an ease and an organization um, for each of these allocation cycles on our files tab to confirm that yes, we have completed um, the 8610 submission for that year, okay? You know, like I said, this, this is a process organization um, type of action that we're doing here by associating the PDFs to these allocation cycles. Um, you don't have to do this. You're not required by the system to do this, as I mentioned, I'll click back here into my tax form 8610. Um, this, um, you know, tax year that you process the 8610 for uh, is always available here. It's always here for you. Um, again, you know, we just like to see from, you know, dotting all the I's and crossing all the T's from a process perspective um, to you know, upload those PDFs to those allocation cycles, okay? So a little bit on process there. Let's take um, just a few more minutes here um, and kind of dive back in um, to our associated 8609s for just a minute. Um, one of the items that I want to point out, and we kind of, we looked at it together when we looked at the Schedule A's, but let's look at it for the 8609s as well. 
once we've associated these 8609s to the tax form, just like we saw in the Schedule A, we can actually click through in any row here and be directly um, navigated to the actual 8609 screen for the building for the tax credit deal, okay? Um, if there's any type of review that we need to be performing um, or anything of that nature, again, we have that quick access um, to dial into that 8609, um, do any review there that we need to. Um, and of course, remember that when we access this 8609, um, you know, we are now accessing and positioned at our tax credit deal, right? So we have all of the deal detail available here um, in the left navigation menu, okay? And a quick cancel, if I just need to do a quick review here on the 8609, just clicking our cancel button in our top toolbar is gonna take me right back to my 8610, okay? So everybody, that brings us to um, a wrap up um, of our session today. Uh, we learned um, and refreshed, um, again, um, how to confirm those tax form configuration settings um, used on our 8610. But remember too that those settings, those configuration settings, the agency name, the agency address, and the agency um, employer, employer ID, um, those are used in our other um, tax forms as well. Um, so, you know, kind of helping us out in multiple places there. Um, but we, we reviewed how to um, give a look into those, check those out, make sure that our items are set correctly. We also have um, that um, title and name of our authorizing official, right? Our signature um, person within our agency um, is included there as well. Next, um, we looked at creating that 8610 record for the reporting year. Remember, our example was using 2020 because we don't have that 2021 form yet from the IRS. Um, I'm keeping an eye out for it. Um, and please, if any of you catch it before I do, please drop me an email. Um, we're kind of waiting anxiously for that always toward this time of the year. Um, but so again, we learned about creating that 8610 record, setting our status um, to in process as we begin working um, on that reporting year. Um, and then recall that we, we next move right into associating our 8609s. Um, that we're going to um, submit with that 8610. Um, recall that in, in that action of associating the 8609s, the system will um, provide some suggested 8609s to you um, in that search modal, right? Um, remember that you can change that search criteria. Um, and remember as well, you know, when you're come time to work on this, you know, late January, early February, grab this PowerPoint and again, use it as a cheat sheet for, you know, how those search modals are populated, how those line items um, across that entire 8610 are populated. Okay. Use a cheat sheet. You know, we've got a good, um, understandable, kind of condensed. Um, description of each line item and search criteria for you that's quick and easy to understand, okay? So we, we associated our 8609s. We then associated our Schedule A's, okay? Finally, and same idea there, remember, with our Schedule A's, the system will offer to you a pre-population of Schedule A's. And so Remember again to lean on this, lean on this um, PowerPoint to refresh yourself on what that criteria 
is why are you seeing those particular schedule A's? Okay. Next and finally, we then learn about completing that 8610, right? So we're returning to that main tab and we need to use that calculate button that's in our top toolbar. Remember, because that button is going to update our main tab with all the details in part one and part two based on the 8609s and the schedule A's that we've associated, okay? Remember as well on that main tab, we do have part three in the lower portion of the screen there that um, includes right for 2020, those three questions that you need to answer there, yes or no checkbox. Don't forget about those. Um, and then finally, we learned about once we feel that our package is really ready to go, we generate the PDFs that will actually have signature and then physically mail. And remember, we can have up to three PDFs. That first PDF is going to be the actual 8610 itself. The second PDF will be all of the 8609s that we have associated, okay? Remember, all those 8609s are um, included in, in a single PDF for us, okay, as part of the package. And then possibly we have a PDF that includes all of our Schedule A's that we've associated. And again, same concept like the 8609s, all of those Schedule A's are included in a single PDF. Okay, so up to three PDFs there um, that we include as our package for our 8610. Of course, then we go out for signature and we're ready to send that out to the IRS. Remember also, we talked about, um, you know, the process, the organization of scanning and uploading those PDFs attaching them to the tax credit cycle records um, just for easy access, right? Just for a very complete picture of each allocation cycle every year, okay? Remember, <clears throat> we talked about that that 8610 record will be forever available for you, um, you know, in that utility panel in that menu option, it's not going to go away. Somebody would have to actively delete that, which I know nobody would. So it's not required that you um, scan and upload um, the 8610s, the PDFs, right? But again, for you know, very standard process and organization, we like to see those attached to those allocation cycle records. Okay, and remember as well, we talked about and we reviewed both on our 8609s and our Schedule A tabs where we have the various forms listed. Each of those rows are click through such that we can navigate to the 8609 or the Schedule A and review the true detail of those forms. Um, as we're associating those um, to that 8610, okay? So that wraps us up for 8610s for this year, everybody. I wanna thank you for joining into this session. Um, please add all of your questions um, to the chat, to the Q&A, um, and or um, email me with other questions that you might have around these tax forms. Um, as they might come up later today or later in the week. And I just want to remind everybody um, that throughout ProLink HFA, throughout the system, remember that you always have access to the Help Center. There is that blue question mark at the upper right there next to your system search that allows you to access that Help Center where you can get um, you know, all the detail that we talked about today and more. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks for joining this session for this year. And we'll see you at the next session. Bye-bye. Thank you, Kelly.
And thank you everyone for joining the session. I hope you found great value in this session. As a reminder, a copy of Kelly's PowerPoint is available here. You can also come back and watch the recording of the session anytime. Even after the conference is over, you're able to log back onto the platform for the next 90 days to watch any of the session recordings. The survey is available on the right side of your screen. Please provide any feedback you might have on this particular session. You can type in any outstanding questions that were not answered during the session. This was the last session of day one. I hope you're enjoying the conference. We'll see you back on the platform tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. Eastern. Coffee and Bagel is technically available right now, although we are not giving away a gift card this time. Please feel free to meet and chat with other attendees if you have time. Good night.